For an extremely long time, humans have envisioned what life may be like in other worlds. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, the most impressive telescope in existence, that question can at last be answered. While observing the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is only four light years away, scientists have seen some impossible to miss anomalies from one of the planets in the system, Proxima b. These anomalies, called counterfeit lights, have perplexed the best minds in the scientific community. But what are they? Do these lights suggest the existence of intelligent life on the planet? Go along with us as we investigate the James Webb's startling discovery of city lights that change everything. The only life that we are at present aware of is on Earth. Since the beginning of civilization, humans have wondered whether there is life elsewhere in the universe. To complete such an interstellar search, American astronomers Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson launched the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, project in 1984. The nonprofit's objective was to gather space-borne radio signals. Radio waves can travel farther and are therefore more likely to be recognized by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the novel Allen Telescope Cluster in the Californian Cascade Mountains. This is because radio waves are less dispersed or absorbed than other types of radiation. But in the past 30 years, no verifiable extraterrestrial signal has been discovered. After that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch helped in the quest to explore a range of distances, discovering undiscovered planets orbiting faraway stars. The largest telescope on the planet, which is drifting around a million miles from Earth and furnished with incredibly sensitive detectors, will be used. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside those in our solar system, but since then, more than 4,000 additional planets, also referred to as exoplanets, have been discovered orbiting different stars. According to NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest signs of life beyond our solar system may be seen in extraterrestrial vegetation. The Galileo spacecraft turned its instruments back toward Earth when it was in transit to Jupiter and found a positive indication of the presence of vegetation. The instrument recognized the vegetation red edge, a blend of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For instance, a planet like Earth that is covered in a wilderness should have a strong and easily identifiable red edge. The JWST will measure the red edge of distant Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars. These could be significant signs of life in the exoplanet atmosphere. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST may be able to distinguish it as it enters the planet's atmosphere. The light's missing wavelengths would then be discovered through spectroscopy. Atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths, making a characteristic, unique fingerprint that the JWST can perceive. This technique may be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. Almost certainly, life could exist on Earth-sized planets with atmospheres similar to our own, with a predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By searching for elements that aren't usually present, one may be able to identify mechanical life. Chlorocarbon CFCs, created for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would probably be noticeable to extraterrestrial observers monitoring Earth's atmosphere from a distance. If the JWST saw CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be an obvious sign of civilization. In reality, life on exoplanets could not in any way resemble life on Earth. Sometimes, even natural life, like extremophile species, can seem extraterrestrial. This is a group of organisms, basically bacteria, that can survive in environments where other living things would perish. Some can withstand heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, some can withstand cold as low as minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and some can survive in strong acids with pH levels below 3, while others can be seen on Earth in places where we wouldn't expect to find any life whatsoever. But since planets like Earth are more likely to support life than planets with severe temperatures or acidic conditions, it may be a good idea to start with those first. 
Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. The classification for our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are less common and often have shorter lifespans. In our universe, the probability of studying planets orbiting red dwarf stars, which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the Sun, is higher. There is a greater opportunity for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms because these stars have longer lifespans. Significantly around 40 light years away from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of the JWST's first mission. It revolves around a quiet red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of the rocky planets, in the so-called habitable zone, could have liquid water on their surfaces. The TRAPPIST-1 star, despite having a much smaller and colder mass than our Sun, radiates light that is similar to that of Earth. Because of the closed orbit of its planets, the best opportunity for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light-years from the Sun and our nearest star. Proxima is about 600 times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun for it to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with three times the mass in this habitable region in a zone that looks like a habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to sustain water. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri. It's possible that Proxima b is an airless, lifeless planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star, Proxima Centauri, at a distance of only 4.6 million miles. The planet, Proxima b, is in a close orbit that exposes it to strong solar winds that can totally destroy its atmosphere. It also provides sufficient sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are similar to those on Earth. Because of its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is believed to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star, like the moon does to Earth. Regarding Earth, Proxima Centauri is about 18% the mass of the Sun and burns much less brightly than one might expect for a planet so close to its star, just 5% of the Sun's energy. This may be expected to result in an intensely hot, ash-covered planet. Liquid water could easily exist on Proxima b, as long as the planet has an atmosphere to warm it. Since the total energy arriving at it from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives, the planet is not especially well suited to life. It is most likely tidally locked, meaning it always faces the same direction toward the star, producing long-lasting day and night sides with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high-energy radiation as Earth does because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri, including X-rays and bright light flares. Proxima b is also bombarded with high-energy particles during star flare-ups unless it has a shielding magnetic field, similar to Earth's. Nevertheless, there are certain realistic conditions that could make it a habitable world. Sadly, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets may be susceptible to a rapid collapse because of the freezing out of unstable gases on the night side. A planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. However, because we know nothing about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we can't even guess whether the planet has an atmosphere. But since an atmosphere presupposes the existence of seas, and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life, we are desperate to know whether Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization. It could have solar panels covering the day side to produce power to light and warm the evening side, which would otherwise be excessively cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has set off a competition to determine whether it transits its star's face, as seen from Earth. These transits would allow scientists to determine the planet's size and mass, which would then enable them to determine its density. Realizing that would provide insight into the planet's rough composition and give information on the materials used to form those rocks. During a transit, starlight could reveal the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. However, 
The probability that the orbit will be in the right alignment for scientists to see a transit is only 15%. The star's propensity to erupt also complicates matters. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is deceiving, as stellar heating causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and re-emit it as infrared light. Nevertheless, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope was made specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared intensity signature is the key to distinguishing the planet's atmosphere. Furthermore, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong tendency to detect water. The JWST will be able to observe city lights on Proxima b's night side, even if they are as weak as what our civilization currently employs. On the night side of Earth, the JWST could identify artificial illumination as long as it was constrained to a frequency band that is 1,000 times smaller than the starlight. Proxima b's day side is intensely covered with solar panels because of its unique spectral edge, which allows it to reflect starlight as Proxima b revolves around its star. If Proxima b is completely composed of bare stone, the temperature difference between day and night will be more pronounced. If the planet has an atmosphere and oceans, both of which conduct heat, the temperature difference will be less. In the event that there isn't an atmosphere, Proxima b's day side and night side temperatures will differ more significantly. The day side will radiate all the energy it receives from Proxima Centauri as black body radiation. We can estimate the precise amount of black body radiation that should be present on the night side. On the other hand, the night side will appear frozen, a miserable form of desolation. If the temperature difference between day and night is less pronounced, we can infer the presence of an atmosphere. It will only take the JWST 111.2 Earth days to measure the radiation from Proxima b's two faces after it has completed its orbit around the star. In the event that Proxima b has an atmosphere, the next stage will be to analyze its composition. The presence of gases like oxygen, water vapor, and methane could indicate habitable conditions, or even actual living things. However, to accomplish this, we must successfully capture starlight as it passes through or bounces off the planet's atmosphere, which is a very difficult task. The JWST can only closely inspect a few of the closest potentially habitable worlds because it was not built to search for extraterrestrial life. Additionally, it is limited to tracking changes in the atmospheric concentrations of methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. The JWST is unable to identify the presence of unbonded oxygen, which is the strongest sign of life. Despite this, some mixtures of these gases may suggest life. One of the ground-based observatories that will be able to conduct a thorough atmospheric investigation is the Extremely Large Telescope which is scheduled to begin operation in the mid-2020s. Ozone may be among the substances that the JWST can detect. Until those telescopes are operational, the JWST may give us data to consider for the next decade.